Welcome to the second video in the two video series on the overview assembly video of our ShopBot five foot by eight foot PRS Alpha CNC machine. Now, if you missed part one, go ahead and click the link in the description and you can catch up there and then you can follow this video. So let's go ahead and continue getting this machine set up. The following morning is here. We can go ahead and get started on the cable train mounting brackets. This assembly helps provide support to the cable chain and then also protects it. And there's a lot of valuable electronics and cords that run in that cable chain. Now it's time to give this unit a little power and some air. We start unwrapping all the cords that are necessary to energize this unit. We start out by estimating the amount of cable we need before we start running it through the cable chain and first initiate it through the front and then we can unlock the entire cable chain's uh, support or locking little brackets and start running all our cables and hoses. Connecting the power to the spindle is kind of a delicate process. You want to be very careful and follow the instructions so you do not damage that connection. That screw is a little bit finicky. This support bracket is going to give a little strain relief to those electronic cables as well as a spot for the dust collection hoses to mount to. And that's what we're installing here is a couple uh, hose clamps to grab onto the dust collection hose. I thoroughly enjoyed wiring up the CNC. I just have a, a real appreciation for nice and neat cable management and the cable chains were really, really fun. It makes everything neat and organized. Uh, Chris had a lot of uh, neat uh, tips and tricks in getting everything properly aligned, what to run first, um, as well as the directions. The directions were very good at this point as well. And then we had to cable tie literally everything. We didn't want anything loose or uh, potentially get damaged by passing material or tools or equipment. We can now install the VFD with a couple support brackets. Now you'll see a technique that I taught Chris just by uh, chance and necessity. It's the knee lift. Uh, use the knees um, in a laying or sitting position and raise and lower the VFD while you can align the bolts to the bracket. Here we're installing some of the air infrastructure. The ATC needs air to change tools as well as a pneumatic cylinder that uh, counteracts the weight of the spindle. These brackets will allow us to mount the control box to the main frame of the unit. It is going to be up out of the way. It's going to be nice and protected. It's definitely a two person job to lift that in place and get it secured. It secures to the longer rail as well as that side leg for extra rigidity. Next, we can screw the proxy switches in place. These are the soft starts or electronic stops. Once they uh, make contact with a uh, registration bolt on the frame, the unit will limit out and not go any further. It is finally time to energize this bad boy. We had a professional electrician come in and wire everything up for us, and we can move the unit for the first time, which was extremely exciting and encouraging. On the ATC side of the unit, we went ahead and installed a tool holder vise. This screws to the main gantry and that allows you to secure the tool holder in place while you put a tool into the collet and tighten it up. We went ahead and installed a large spoil board bit or surfacing bit to go ahead and flatten and level the surface of our CNC. We use the Z0 or C2 routine to zero it out with the touch plate and alligator clip to the top of our spoil board. It was extremely exciting, encouraging, and satisfying to see this thing cut the first time. But when we ran the spoil board operation, you can see the discrepancies in the table. Now they're both visually and physically off. You can tell the difference between the left side and right side of the cut. Chris used a couple uh, field tips to get that spindle nice and level or plumb. We went and re-zeroed and re-ran the spoil boarding operation. Now the spoil board was still visibly off, but there was zero discrepancies between the left side and right side of the cut. Now we can install a straight bit and make the air channels for the vacuum table. There will be five different zones. There'll be four zones to the right and then a long and skinny zone uh, on the far left side of the table. The vacuum table was definitely a pricey upgrade or addition to the, the main unit, 
but it was something that we believe, especially after four months of, of using the machine, that it is essential if you're doing any sort of production work or sheet good uh, work, which is what we're doing. You simply slap the full sheet on top and the vacuum table holds it down. Now, that doesn't work for all types of situations and applications, but when you're dealing with full sheet goods, it is an absolute must. This procedure made a lot of dust, but we have our five horsepower clear view dust collection system hooked up to this. It has a six inch main line going all the way right before it switches to a four inch flexible hose that connects to the actual CNC. And it seems to perform very, very well. Next, we put a long straight bit into the CNC spindle and we cut the holes for the vacuum table ports. Moving on to the next very expensive upgrade was the automatic tool changer. This basically allows the unit to switch tools uh, mid-project, so you simply click the go program or start program once, and then the spindle will go ahead and switch tools for different operations in your programming. Now this is a very expensive upgrade, but it is absolutely essential for production work. We are going ahead and calibrating all the positions of the tool holders. We've got all our bits put in. Now these bits have changed drastically over the course of the last four months, but we will have a separate video on tuning and setting up the auto tool changer. It is so mesmerizing watching the CNC change tools automatically. I could watch it all day long. We go ahead and load up our paint tray with some glue and use a roller to apply it to our Xterra and then we place a piece of MDF on top that we went and spoil boarded the skins off it. Once you remove the skins it is very porous and allows airflow to go right through it. The beautiful thing about this is having the vacuum table set up. Once we got the MDF in place, we turned on the vacuum pump, opened up all the zones, and that allowed us to have perfect clamping pressure all the way across that MDF board. With the CNC machine 99% done, we had a few things to tidy up here and there, as well as some training with Chris. But after that third night, the CNC was making the shop money. We had six walnut table blanks glued up, and they needed to be surface planed on the CNC. This was an incredibly eye-opening experience to see the value of a CNC on this sort of scale. We have some build videos on the tables as well as many other CNC projects in the near future. So go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned for those videos. Well, there you have it under a week. Well, literally three days this machine was running. We still had a little bit of uh, fine tuning and adjustments some training stuff. So all in all about five days, we had this thing fully operational myself fully trained on this version of the CNC as well as ShopBot software. By no means am I done learning. There's, there's things every time I use this machine that I learn and I wanna teach you guys those as I go. So if you guys enjoy CNC content, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. We'd be happy to provide some feedback. We strongly encourage you to follow us on social media as we do product updates, project updates, and exclusive social media giveaways. I'm Andy Glass. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.